It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. The ADL's motto was fighting hate for good. However, it seems as though that they decided to put it upon themselves to change the definition of racism. Now, the original definition of racism, as defined by the ADL, goes as follows. Racism is the belief that a particular race is superior or inferior to another, that a person's social and moral traits are predetermined by his or her inborn biological characteristics. Racial separatism is the belief, most of the time based upon racism, that different races should remain segregated and apart from one another. As you guys can see, the old definition was perfectly fine. However, here's a new definition as defined by the ADL. Racism is the marginalization and or oppression of people of color based upon a socially constructed racial hierarchy that privileged white people. I'm not really surprised about this redefinition of racism, mostly because I heard this type of argument many times during the 2015 kind of period where many, you know, companies started to redefine the words to mean something that's different than what they actually mean. And so this is like yet another example of a company with like a lot of power who supposedly, you know, fight against hate and are actually actively promoting hate against people based entirely off of their skin color. Now the idea is very American centric. It assumes that every country in the world had the sort of, you know, same type of history that United States had in the past when it comes down to racism, which is not true because if you look at the Asian countries, of course, their discrimination is quite awful towards like Western people. For example, in China, they particularly like, you know, have a sting against black people there. And honestly, it's really disgusting when you really look deep into that kind of whole entire situation. And also in Japanese society, unfortunately, of course, not all Japanese are like this, or not all Chinese are like this, but in Japanese society, they also, of course, have some sort of buildings that openly discriminate against the gaijin or the foreigner because apparently, you know, they're very, you know, xenophobic towards any sort of foreign person that arrives to their country. And so, we also have like the various type of African countries where more or less the white farmers are also being discriminated based entirely of their skin color. And so, it makes no sense to suggest that it's only the white people that are oppressing people of color when in reality, any type of group of people, no matter their background, can also oppress somebody based entirely on their skin color. Not to mention, of course, systemic racism is very different than institutionalized racism. Individual racism is, of course, racism that happens on an individual base. And you don't need to have some sort of power to be a racist. You could just be like a person like me on the street and be racist towards any other group based entirely on their skin color. It does not require a system for racism to happen, but for some strange reason, these activists think that it requires a system, but it does not require a system in the slightest. Now the ADL has like a long history of calling things hate symbols even though they're clearly not hateful. They call Pepe the Frog hateful. They call the OK symbol hateful. But of course, this video is about them redefining the word racist. And so, here are two examples of them actually, of course, calling things, you know, in favor of white people hateful for some strange, odd reason. They say that the phrase, it's OK to be white, as a hate symbol. They said that things like white lives matter is hateful. So any sort of thing that somehow paints white people in a positive light is somehow hateful according to the ADL. Maybe it's me, but when I look at all this information, it seems as though 
that they have some sort of anti-white agenda behind the organization. They're saying that it requires, like, you know, prejudice and power in order to be a racist. They're saying that saying it's okay to be white is some sort of hateful speech. They're saying that saying white life matter is somehow hateful. But yet, they're the ones that supposed to be like the anti-hate group. It's like so completely Orwellian. It's like this sort of double stink or this sort of double speak where they say one thing but it's completely the opposite of what they're saying. And so I don't understand what is the agenda of being anti-white for a hate, like an anti-hate group. It just doesn't make much sense to me. But anyway, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.